morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Jenny Hugens. Saturday was an emotional day for the William Penn women's basketball team as they raised the conference championship banner for the first time in 31 years. They beat Benedictine 88 to 45 on their senior night. The team has had an incredible year with a current record of 28 and 2 and 22 and 2 in the conference and they are now fighting for the national title. But what has made this team as successful as they are? WPNN's Aaron Petrash says there is actually a very important person who has worked just as hard as the women, if not harder, but he is someone on the sidelines. It was an exciting Saturday in the gymnasium watching a ton of happy fans cheer for the basketball team as they became conference champions. But although everyone watching it from the outside sees and hears the hard work the girls are putting in, I wanted to take a deeper look into what it takes to be successful. I can't sit there and tell my players to work hard if I don't work hard. Even though the girls work extremely hard, coach Steve Williamson works just as hard, if not harder. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time. We, we ask our players to give a lot of their time to our program. You know, we have them lift and we have them in study table, we have them in practice, they have to shoot on their own. We have them do a lot of things. Then, you know, we have those high expectations for our players, so we have the, I have those high expectations for myself and my coaching staff so we can be as good as we, we can be. And you're not going to be successful by doing things half-hearted and just being average. So, you know, I've always been, if I'm going to ask my players to bust their butt and give 110% and, and put in extra time, that's the same thing we got to do. Dedication and expecting more from himself is not far-fetched at all. Coach actually spends a night at his office when coming back from away games since he lives far away and takes the time to watch film. It is very true. I, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of times when we get back late from a, a road trip and I'll, I'll stay in my office and watch film till about three and then try and get like two hours of sleep and then uh, get back up and get, you know, again, it's just, I can't expect my players to be successful if I don't put the time in also. And it's all, you know, they, they get the fun part of playing you know, I, I do the, the film breakdown and come up with a game plan and, and then they buy into what we're trying to do and then they, uh, they go out and perform. But yeah, it's true. I, I've, I've spent a few nights in my office and, uh, this year, but it's worth it. You know, when you, when you see the success and when you see the kids happy that they have accomplished something that a lot of people didn't think they could accomplish, it all, it all makes things better. Coach isn't the only one making sacrifices though. He has a wonderful and supporting wife and family back home that makes it possible for him to put so much time and effort into this program. It's pretty much this time of the year, you know, my wife understands a good thing. I have a, a great wife and great family that understands how much work you have to put in and my assistants do a great job, but we, I'd say we probably spend easily 14, 16 hours a day uh, getting ready to prepare for practice, games, recruiting, making ourselves better and what we can do to make individuals better. So next time you think of a championship team, remember there is a lot of work coming not only from players, but also from trainers, coaches, and even family members to make the team successful. This was Arab Trash from WPNA. <laughs> As Black History Month comes to an end here at William Penn, we take a look back at some of the events held during its duration. From the Zuzu Acrobats to the Open Mic Slam Poetry, students found a way to get involved in the month of celebration. The variety of events offered more than just entertainment, but also a lesson in culture to students. It's that lesson that David Abogé wanted to spread across campus in order to achieve a more diverse university really wanted to showcase black history and, and give students an avenue to so showcase their talents and, and just come and glorify God and what God has blessed them with. So we have many students who sign up and are coming to sing, write, you know, read poetry, um, dance if they want to. Um, it's just a really great event that we, we, this is our third year doing it. And so we're really excited to see the outcome of this one. Student activities have never looked so fun thanks to PASS, otherwise known as Programming Activities for Students by Students. While numerous events have been brought to Penn by PASS, this event, however, brought the most students with it. WPNN's Zach Tracy has more.
Live with zest and rhythm, students gathered around the packed courts Tuesday, February 12th to engage in African culture for the first time through the Zuzu African Acrobats. During the performance, the acrobats brought excitement by interacting with students and involving them in many of their acts. Student Cam Shade talked about his experience at the show. Seeing that type of culture and seeing what they bring to the table, without, no one really knows who they were at, at one point, so you actually see that from a viewer standpoint for the first time is actually pretty impressive. The acrobats were brought to William Penn University by PASS, a student-run organization. PASS is responsible for creating a fun experience here at Penn and bringing in a variety of campus events. None of this would be possible without the help of Coach John Haugen. The turnout tonight was amazing. Um, you know, we never know what to anticipate on this. We promote them on social media. We promote it across campus on flyers. You know, we tell coaches and, and administrators, and they help promote it for us. And so we never really know what's going to turn out. And tonight, we uh, I did a head count, and we had over 180 students here. Um, and so this was by far more than more than we imagined, and, and it's a good thing because it, it's it was a great event um, and, and an event that we could a lot of people were able to see, and, and we'll talk about it on campus. Next time you're scrolling through social media or walking around campus, be on the lookout for future pass events for some free and fun entertainment. For William Penn News Now, I'm Zach Tracy. The impact that pass events has on students can be measured by more than just the smiles, but also by the number of students who attend. Coach John Haugen hopes to continue seeing the turnout of student ri students rise for each pass event as the semester goes on. The third annual casino night capped off midterms week and gave students more than just an exam to gamble on. Held by Residence Life, casino night had a prize pool consisting of numerous gift cards and some of the latest technology. Prizes such as an Xbox One and even a flat screen TV were up for grabs at the end of the night. Throughout the event, students tested their luck and skill in games like blackjack, poker, and roulette all with the purpose of winning the most chips and bringing home the best prize during a stressful midterm week. The William Penn University radio station, KIGC, is getting a new antenna. The station suspended their operations on March 5, 2018, after its tower was blown over during a windstorm. The transmitter and broadcast antenna is located on campus, and it's mounted 89 feet above ground level. The calculated height above average terrain is 115 feet. Jimmy Ott, student and general manager of the radio station, says the new antenna is going to help them out, combining it with a more powerful transmitter and higher frequency, but doesn't know anything about the technical side and the replacement of the antenna. There is not a specific date on when the antenna is going to be replaced, but hopes are it happens this year. Over the past few years, many things have changed. One of the most exciting changes here at William Penn is the increase in numbers of students applying. Jared Buckaloo sat down with Ariana Davis, an admissions counselor at Penn, to discuss why we are seeing an increase. Thinkers are moving fast here in the admissions office at William Penn University. Admissions counselors and other faculty are meeting with prospective students daily and are excited to see the numbers grow from previous years goal was 425 I believe and we brought over that and then over the course of this year from the start in August to now we are already 36% um, ahead in applications I think we are 35% ahead in students who have deposited so they're already saying they're coming here they paid their deposits done all their forms everything like that and the jump has now went from 425 is now up to 500 and 510. Adding new sports to the pen lineup, such as lacrosse, might be a contribution to this increase. Even if the students aren't in my territory, I can see that um, we have a lot more of men's volleyball and lacrosse players coming all over. I know, um, especially with lacrosse, it's a new sport and there aren't a lot of schools that do offer it, so we're really unique to that in that most schools just have it as a club, so students can't get um, scholarships, and through us, they can get scholarships with that. Now, William Penn is very much a sports-driven school, but with adding majors to the undergrad program, that could also bring new students to Penn as well. We're looking at getting new majors, so we have like financing as a new major. Um, I know there's talk, I've heard talk of other majors as well being added to. Get ready to see more new faces than ever next fall. In Oskaloosa, Jared Bucklew, William Penn News Now.
coming up after the break, find out how a wrestling event held in the pack was able to be viewed on the other side of the world. Stay with William Penn News Now. We'll be right back. William Penn University provided the opportunities for me to widen my potential after graduation. I loved being involved with the women's golf team and was able to focus my last few years on internships at the YMCA. With all the opportunities at Penn, I hope to one day be working in a stadium for a pro team or doing the business side of sports, which I love. The opportunities are real. Your potential is unlimited. Discover your place at William Penn University. On February 16th, the William Penn Statesman held the Hart Wrestling Championships in the pack. There was a great turnout of wrestlers and audience members, but some of the audience didn't even have to be in the pack to spectate. Jared Bucklew has the story. At first glance, the Hart Championships that William Penn University held looks like a great turnout, but the digital communication students are making that audience even bigger and they're doing it one click at a time. Just, William Penn students and instructors sorry, work side by side to produce video streams through a program called Production Truck that can be seen worldwide through the Statesmith Athletic website. Darren Williams, the project manager for CRI, has been vital to the readiness of the streams and students running the computers. We're going to actually be streaming five different streams. Uh, there are four mats uh, that are going to be have matches on them throughout the day. Uh, we're going to have each stream is going to have a, a mat isolated. Our fifth stream is going to be our overview stream. We're going to be moving between the four mats. That's where our announcers are going to be. That's where our high quality graphics are going to be uh, as opposed to what's built in the production truck. Students use the computers around the room to build graphics and update scorecards that have the wrestler's name, weight, school, and round on them. The students' hard work for this event and future events using Production Truck could possibly help with William Penn's recruitment. What we're trying to do is we're trying to deliver a high-level broadcast, a high-level experience for the conference championships. And so we're trying to do all the little different things that other schools haven't done to be uncommon and unique. And uh, you know, having the five different broadcasts is something another school hasn't ever done. And so that's unique in itself, so for our ability to recruit all students for all programs, including digital communications. And what a great opportunity students have at William Penn University to come to a school like this and be able to do things at a high level. In Oskaloosa, Jared Bucklew, William Penn News Now. With new sports coming to Penn, such as men's volleyball, the digital communications program will be using this new equipment to stream many of those upcoming games as well. It's been a long and difficult year for the Statesman men's basketball team, who have often been her heralded as one of the top four teams in the country in the past years and were even ranked number one nationally in the preseason. However, the season has been plagued by injuries, roster changes, and shortcomings as of lately. This will be the first team since the Statesman joined the Heart of America Athletic Conference to not win the regular season. On the other side of the spectrum, the Statesman women's basketball team has experienced a historical year, clinching the first conference title in 31 years with a record of 27-2 and 22-2 and in the conference. Coach Steve Williamson earned Heart of America Coach of the Year in just his second year with the Statesman, and four players were recognized with all conference honors. Senior forward Vashti Wabarocha has named Heart was named Heart of America Player of the Year, one of only four individuals in program history to receive the honor. The Lady Statesmen are now sitting at number 11 nationally with a guaranteed ticket to nationals and are 1-0 in conference tournament play. The humble but hungry women's basketball star Vashti Wabarocha has had an amazing career at William Penn University, but she's not done yet. The exercise science major has reached amazing goals such as a thousand points and a thousand rebounds, but she says she's just doing what she's supposed to do. Um, I'm happy. I mean, it's something that you, like with the rebounds, it's something that goes with the game, so it's kind of just like you getting praise for something you're supposed to do, but it's, it's good to see. Um, I don't know, I'm just kind of happy. It's been long four years here and I'm just grateful that I've gotten to accomplish so much and make bonds with my teammates. The impressive young lady may say that it just comes with playing the game, but we know the hard work and dedication it takes to make such outstanding accomplishments. 
Along with those accomplishments, she also played a major role in leading the team to winning the conference championship. Keep up the hard work and good luck to her and the rest of the women's basketball team at Nationals. Softball and Baseball. The Statesman softball team competed in the Cowtown Classic in Fort Worth, Texas. Splitting with a 7-6 win against Central Baptist and a 1-18 loss to Oklahoma City University, they then traveled to Batesville, Arkansas and rallied against St. Mary 6-1, Lyon 3-1, St. Mary 5-4, and took a loss to Lyon 1-3 to round out the series. The ladies will compete in Claremont, Florida this Saturday, taking on Northwestern Ohio and Trinity International. The Statesman baseball team improved to 10-3 with two wins over Bacone, two wins over Mount Marty, and a loss to Mount Marty to complete that series. They then traveled to Albany, Indiana, and split two wins and two losses with Indian Southwest. The boys will take on Baker this Saturday on the road. As for football, the William Penn football team is excited to announce its 2019 National Signing Day commitments. The Statesman inked 43 players to attend the university this coming fall and compete on the football team. Track and field had a total of five individuals from our indoor track team that will represent WPU at NAIA Nationals on February 28th to March 2nd in Brookings, South Dakota. Kayla Music, 60 meter dash, Chris Leba, 60 meter dash, Mofinuala Elade high jump, Tristan Elmore high jump, and Sage Ersman shot put have all earned trips to compete for national glory. Thank you for joining us this morning. From all of us in the digital communications program, we hope you have a fun and safe spring break.